turned out to be a comparatively short 10-hour train ride from Tinda to Dipkun, which was the next town that had a North Korean camp in it. When we finally got there, it was pretty late in the day. We had to move fast if we were going to see the North Korean camp and get back in time before the pitch black Siberian night fell and stranded us in the forest. We're sort of in the middle of nowhere. But we're going to try to go to the camp now. The old chief of police of Dipkun, who we met on the train, had offered to take us out there in his new truck, but was a bit worried about the bridge because it had recently been washed out. We could take this, this would be awesome. Is this us? So we are in a race against time to go see the North Korean camp. Uh, the old chief of police is driving us. He'd been the chief of police for over a decade and consequently knew the North Korean situation there quite well. They get Kopecks. What's Kopecks? Pennies. They live in smelly barracks, like dozens of people all together. Yeah, I know. I think we're getting there. The bridge is made out of old railway ties. Our buddy, the chief of police, he buys this truck on credit yeah. and then fucking risks the whole thing by driving across <laughs> this fucking thing, which he doesn't even, even know who built it or when. Maybe we should have taken our stuff off in case he falls into the river. He's got balls, this guy. Yeah. We'll have to buy him some more vodka. Hey! Oh my God, it's completely been cleared. So this is our chief of police, and he's breaking into the, to the North Korean camp. I love him. <laughs> I love this guy so much. This was a whole Korean village. They had a sign here that said, Kim Il-sung lives with us forever. Because I guess that there have been some people who came, uh, Simon, who's with us being one of them, they've knocked down the camp and they've moved on to the next village down the, down the train line. This used to have a slogan on it that said, Laboratory of Kim Il-sung's Theory. So they've given it over to an entrepreneur to take down and then his benefit is he gets to sell the spare parts and metal and stuff like that. Let's try to open the door. This was built by the North Koreans to resemble North Korea. They wanted it to be like a home away from home, and this was the laboratory of Kim Il-sung's theory. So we're gonna go check it out. So this is where they would learn about Juche, the ideals of Kim Il-sung. The study room was a bit freaky because it had the requisite painting of Mount Bektu, which I had seen a lot when I was in North Korea which was where Kim Jong-il was supposed to have been born under a double rainbow as a new star shot into the sky to mark the joyous event. But in actual fact, he was really born in a small log cabin near Khabarovsk, where we had started our journey, while the Soviets trained his dad to be the Stalinist cult of personality leader of Korea after World War II. So there's a room here filled with Juche ideals. You kind of feel like you've stumbled on a cult house because there's these weird things <laughs> to make candles and fires and homage to the Juche ideals and we're finding crazy propaganda stuff because North Korea is a cult of personality. One man runs like a god, the country. It's kind of got this eerie Pompeii feeling yeah. about it. <laughs> it's such a bizarre concept that there's little North Koreas dotted around Siberia. This would have been living quarters right here. Not very nice. Pure filth. Very disgusting. There's one of the old dudes. Oh shit. Oh, that's... He says it's fine. Are they North Koreans? No, but it'd be cool if they were. Yeah. And they saw us looting. <laughs> we're literally getting caught looting right now. All smiles. Just smile, they'll think you're crazy. <laughs> he says you want to see a real Korean? Yeah. We should get the vodka. 
Здравствуйте. Америка. Знакомься. Я с вами, да. Hello. Simon. Um, we have to cross the bridge while it's light. Oh, okay. Well, I feel bad for the guy because he's obviously terrified, so we'll blur his face. Yeah, definitely. Maybe we should let him know that we'll do that. Yeah. When we told him not to worry and that we would blur his face, the North Korean worker relaxed a little and seemed much happier. He also told us that the main part of the workers' group had moved even further up the line, so we got into another train and we kept going. Should we get arrested? Yes. <laughs>